Hi guys, uh, this is Alex again and Kevin Hi. from the Growing Younger team. Now today we're going to talk to you about um, gardening. Okay, so the reason why we chose this topic is because me as a physio, I see a lot of a lot of you guys, a lot of patients who come to me with back pain, neck pain, shoulders, knees, all sorts of body parts that are hurting because of gardening. Now gardening in itself is not a bad thing to do, but um, it's just that the way you garden, the certain mistakes that you could, you could be making right now that could be placing you at high risk of injury. So it's very important now it's summer, um, summer is coming and, and a lot of you are getting out there, planting things, um, digging, tidying things up. So it's very important that you know how to keep yourself safe. So I'm going to talk about the five mistakes that are very common that people make, uh, make in the garden and how to avoid them and Gavin then going to cover the uh, strengthening exercises, basically generally exercises uh, to keep yourself safe, to, to get yourself ready for, for gardening. Okay, so very important topic um, uh, if you want to keep yourself healthy. So, first of all I'm going to cover the five mistakes and the first very common mistakes, uh, mistake that people make in the garden is they don't actually warm up. Now, you can treat gardening as a sort of, um, as, as a physical exercise, as if you were going for a run or play sport, okay? You want to get yourself, your body ready for it, so you want to warm up first. Now, it could be just uh, as little as just going for a brisk walk or even better, uh, Gavin is going to take us through some warm-up exercises at the end of this video uh, to show you which warm-up exercise is actually better for gardening so you can keep yourself safe. Uh, number two mistake that people often make is... Um, you could be doing an activity in the garden like weeding, um, planting, harvesting, digging. You shouldn't be, whatever it is that you're doing, you shouldn't be doing it for longer than 30 to 40 minutes. Okay, so basically keep, make sure you keep rotating. Okay, you do a bit of planting on your knees, then maybe you do a bit of pruning, uh, a little bit of digging. So you keep swapping and have regular rest breaks as well. So don't just keep, you know, kneeling on the floor for on, on the ground for like three hours non-stop. And that's what that's what I see a lot when people come to me with shoulder or back problems is because I ask them what, what have you done and they said oh well I spent a bit a few hours in the garden what did you do I was just digging the hole like three hours or four hours okay so just that amount of time doing the same activity is certainly not good for you um, another thing that's very important the third mistake is uh, basically people when they with gardening obviously a lot of it is happening down quite at a low level on the ground so Basically, people tend to sort of hunch through their back and they sort of do a lot of slumping, slouching, crouching. And you know, if you do it a few times, your back becomes quite um, sore and weak. So, basically, if you need to uh, get down to the lower level, try and bend your knees and bend your hips rather than bend your back. So, basically, that's sort of that's the, that's the best way to do it rather than having to sort of hunch right over like that. Okay, um, mistake number four digging. Okay. A lot of you guys, uh, that when you hold a spade, you're sort of like, you're forcing it through your, with, your, with your back. Okay, so that again, if you do it over a period of time, uh, your back becomes quite strained and so you end up with back pain. Okay, so try and use your foot and your leg to actually apply a bit of pressure on the spade. If you need to kind of get, get it in the, into the soil, um, that takes a lot of pressure off your um, mid-back and, um, and sort of mid, your midsection in your back. And the final and the fifth mistake is that um, some of you have bad knees. Um, so when you kneel on the on the ground, you tend to kind of just put your knees down on the ground. So I would suggest you use some kind of cushion. You can find a piece of foam. So kneeling on the ground is probably better when you have some kind of cushioning under your knees. Uh, kneeling could be a good way to avoid crouching. So it's not a bad position to be in, but just make sure you've got some kind of cushioning under your knees. To avoid knee problems um, later on. Okay, so those are the five mistakes that um, uh, I said we're going we're going to cover. Now I let um, Kevin take over and show you some exercises. Cool. So if you're talking about well, the injuries Alex had just spoken about, okay, we work out from the top. So they call dynamic stretches. A lot of people when they think of stretching is just there and holding and yanking and pulling across. When in actual fact, if you're going to be mobile doing things in the garden and or whatever else. You need to mobilize, mobilize the joint and warm up dynamically. And it just means moving the, the shoulder through the range of movement. This could just be 10 um, arm circles forward, 10 back, and then do smaller ones as well because our, our shoulder works in all kinds of different ranges of movement. 
So do big ones and then do small ones. And what you're going to find is a bit of a burn going on the shoulder. That's probably a good thing, just means the muscles are working, they're starting to get ready to, to be active in the garden. So then if you're coming down with a more lower back pain, a lot of us are quite stiff most of the time, and then all of a sudden you've got to lift something and we're not mobile enough and then we hurt ourselves. So um, on a basic level, a, a good way just a torso twist, so if you keep your chest up, a good way to do is put your, put your thumbs into your chest and, and rotate from the, the sort of lumbar spine area. So it's not twisting the whole legs, it's just holding your, your hips nice and forward and then just gently twisting back and forth. And you feel your back start to you know, pull and creak, and, and it'll, but the more you do it, and the warm up nice and gently, you find that your range of movement will increase um, and obviously you get a bit more limber in the lower back area. Um, then you're going to move down to your sort of um, your hips and stuff and if you've got sore hips, even if you just rotate in the hips outwards, both sides, both sides and then obviously inwards and inwards and that is going to help the hips. Then you've got some um, just basic leg swings, you're just going to swing the legs back and forth, get the hamstrings and the hip flexors um, nice and warm. So you come across frontwards and then you come across the front of your body. So if your balance isn't very good, you can hold onto a wall. Um, you just want to get all that, those joints moving um, to prepare you for what you're doing in the garden. So then we're looking at, uh, well, like I said, our lower backs as well. Um, and talk about the correct lifting. So if any of you have like a manual, manual handling course, you're going to know that is the correct way to lift something. And we, we get a bit lazy. And when we're going to lift something off the floor, we'll bend from the lower back uh, and then obviously the back will go. So I'm going to quickly demonstrate on Alex for you. There's two, two versions. One's a deadlift. So if you just come that way for me, right? So with Alex, you've got a big hinge in your hip right there. So what I want Alex to do is put, pop his hips back and keep his legs just nice and soft. So bring your hips back and, and you keep his upper back nice and straight. You put your arms together. So if you're going to lower or bend anything down, he's going to bend from his hips. So as he comes down this way, he's letting the hamstrings, keep the knees straight up for me, just bend the hips back. Cool. So he's putting all the, all the tension in his hamstrings and his glutes and not his lower back so much. So if Alex was just to flex from the, the, the back and the spine, Obviously, this arching sort of rolls over, and that's really bad for your um, your back as well. So that then the other one is just a deadlift pattern. Okay, so when you kind of come down, you, you you sort of double that up. So as your hips come back, knees come down, and then you're going to bend the knees. And again, you can see the back is flat. So if Alex does it again, so two movements: hips come back, hands come between the legs, and you sort of bend the knees. Right. So as you can see in this position, his knees are behind his toes, which is a good good position for the knees. And his back is nice and flat, and all the pressure and strength is in his legs. So when he stands up off the floor, he's pushing with his legs, and he's not pulling with his back, which is where most of the injury is done. Um, awesome, man. Um, so I guess for most of us, you know, a five kilo weight is probably heavy enough for, for, for people anyway, unless you're lifting properly. So if something is more than that, then you probably want to do it together. So if obviously if we can imagine something in between us, both of us would come down, We'd grip her at the bottom and we'd use our legs to carry and lift. We wouldn't do it lifting from the floor this way because that's the first, you know, first port of going to hurt yourself when you're doing it. Um, and going back to what I said about the, the dig in the hole as well, what's the video we did last week about core sort of stabilization and rotation? That would also be a really good, good exercise to strengthen the core to allow you to dig as well. It fires up all the core muscles, which is quite cool. Um, so that's pretty much it for me, the two, two main exercises you're going to do for in the, lifting the garden, some warm-ups. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much it, isn't it? So um, what we're going to talk about now is, just quickly, is that um, if, you're, if you find yourself getting a little bit older, getting a few weeks, um, aches, aches and pains, um, and you, know, you want to start taking care of your health now, you need to come in, come in and see Alex, uh, Alex and I. We'll do something that's called a uh, Discover Your Inner Youth uh, Assessment. And essentially what that's going to do is it's going to try and um, work out your, your biological age. Because as we know, if you've been watching our videos, um, your age, calendar age is different to your biological age. Uh, and it's quite a big disconnect. So you could be a lot older in your body than you are in years. Um, and obviously we need to try and reverse that a little bit. Um, come in, ask us some really cool tests. So it takes about 40 minutes. Um, I'm going to get a really good understanding of where you are in terms of health and age in your body. Uh, and obviously if um, we can help you then with a good training program, um, under the, uh, the guidance of Alex, obviously the physiotherapist, and me a personal trainer, to give you the best program you can possibly get um, and you know, get you on the right track. Um, so there's going to be a, a link down below to click on for that free assessment. Um, and yeah, we look forward to seeing you guys. So yeah, take care. And we'll, uh... Discovery session is absolutely free as well. Yeah, so sorry, it's, it's, free. it's uh, no obligation, completely free for you, for, free of charge. So there's nothing to risk really. So yeah, yep. awesome. All right, cheers, guys. We'll uh, catch you next time. All right, take care.
Christ.